Christine, my wife, introduced me to the writings of Thich Nhat Hanh and to Buddhist meditation in the early 2000s. Now, Thich Nhat Hanh is a Vietnamese Zen master, Buddhist monk, author, and peace activist. And he was a strong advocate for peace during the Vietnam War. And he left Vietnam to attend the Paris Peace Talks in 1968 and was such a strong advocate for peace that the government would not let him back into Vietnam. So he was one of our heroes. We were really fans of Thich Nhat Hanh. We enjoyed his writings. And we were excited to learn that in October of 2009, he was going to lead a five-day silent Buddhist retreat at Blue Cliff Monastery, just three or four hours away from here. And we'd be able to go and enjoy this close encounter with one of our heroes. And we were two of some 1,100 people who enjoyed the close encounter with one of our heroes. And it was a wonderful retreat. The day before the retreat, however, I'm at work and I'm cleaning up some projects. I'm in a conference room and a coworker, a woman, comes in and says, hey, Tony, I understand you're going on vacation. Where are you going? And I hesitated. Oh, do I, do I say I'm going to a Buddhist retreat? Because my experience had been when, when you uh, interject Buddhism into the conversation with people who aren't all that interested in the topic, really, uh, their comments and reactions and perceptions seem to be based on how uh, Eastern religions have been portrayed in movies and on TV shows for the last 50 or 60 years. And no, my Buddhist name is not Grasshopper. <laughs> but for whatever reason, I decided, I'll just tell her the truth. Well, Chris and I are going on a five-day silent Buddhist retreat. She kind of frowned, and she looked at me and said, well, you know, Tony, if you didn't want to tell me where you're really going, you don't have to. And she stomped out of the room. Oh, well. Anyway, the lesson is a lie. So. so the next day we went to the retreat, and as I said, there were 1,100 people at this retreat, so uh, the, the monastery, Blue Cliff Monastery, 80 acres, they couldn't accommodate everybody, so they put us up in a hotel nearby, and every morning at 5.30, the bus would come and take us to the monastery, short ride. And the five days were just wonderful. They were spent in... in in uh, meditation and Dharma talks and walking meditation, sitting meditations, of uh, guided discussions. There were work periods where people did kitchen work and ground, uh, worked on the ground crews. There was Buddhist chanting, and it was a very calming, peaceful, wonderful five days. And we were, we were enjoying it. And every so often, throughout the five days of the retreat, silent retreat, every so often, a bell would ring that could be heard throughout the campus, 80 acres, it was a big bell. It could be heard everywhere, and whenever the bell would ring, everyone, all 1,100 people, the Buddhist monks, the nuns, the staff, everyone would stop what they were doing, breathe three times, and then resume whatever activity they were doing before the bell had rung. And it's, the purpose of that is to bring everyone back to the present moment and to enjoy your breath. And it's called a bell of mindfulness. Well, one afternoon, Chris and I decided to go to the monastery bookstore, pick up uh, Thich Nhat Hanh's latest book. And we're in the bookstore, and it is mob. It is just really crowded. A lot of people are there. And no one is in a hurry. This is a Buddhist bookstore. No one's in a hurry. Not the patrons, not the clients. So I'm just browsing around, I'm looking, and, and I find next to the uh, display of incense burners, there is a display of, of uh, bells. They're, well, they're called singing bowls. And what it is, uh, they're, they're copper bowls, and they're about you know, five inches in diameter, three to five inches in diameter. They sit on a cushion, and in each one there is a little mallet, a little stick. And uh, what you do is you hit the the, the copper bowl, the brass bowl, on the rim, and it chimes, the ring, boing. Now, 
Buddhists don't say, hit the bell on the rim. That's a little bit too violent for the Buddhist uh, construct. What they say is they invite the bowl to ring. So we need to invite the bowl to ring. And I'm thinking, these, are, these aren't too expensive. These are nice. I, I think it'd be nice to have one of these singing bowls for uh, meditating at home. I wonder how this sounds. So I reach in and I invite the, the bowl to ring. Boom. And everyone in the store stops, <laughs> breathes three times, and look at me. And I am so glad that Buddhists aren't judgmental and that it was a silent retreat. Thank you.